Hi everybody, this is Donnie Vaughn of the Marketing Twins. You can find us online at marketingtwins.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about Google Alerts and two things. One, why you want to use that, and then secondly, how you go about setting that up. So let's talk about why. Uh, there's probably three main reasons why you want to do Google Alerts for your business. Number one is you want to know what your competition is doing. Uh, if your competition has a new product, a uh, new promotion that they're they're advertising, you want to be on top of that. You don't want to find it out from a customer who comes in and says your competitor down the street is offering that. You want to be fully aware of what they're doing, and this is one way to do that. Secondly, you want to be able to know from a branding standpoint if you're being talked about in a positive way, and. Um, that way you can address those and, and thank the person for mentioning it and contribute to the uh, conversation, etc. Uh, and then lastly, you also want to be able to manage it from a negative standpoint. If your brand is being mentioned out on the web in a negative way, you want to be able to, to know when that is uh, information is out there. And these Google Alerts will notify you of that, and so that way you can respond and uh, be able to defend yourself in whatever way you need to do that. And so that would be a few ways that you'd want to be able to uh, set up Google Alerts. And there may be some other reasons as well. And if I get to uh, thinking about those along the way, I will point those out. So how do you go about setting that up? And here's how you do that. First off, you want to get to google.com. And uh, I'm logged in under my account. So if you're, I would suggest you have a Google, Google account. It's pretty easy to set up because you'll use that for a variety of things and uh, Google Alerts is no different. So you could get to Google Alerts a variety of different ways. A simple way is simply just type in Google Alerts here in the search field and then click on the first option here. This is what you want to ultimately get to. Now for this particular example I'm going to sh search for marketing twins. So I'm going to type in marketing twins. Now one thing you want to know about the search terms here if there is a particular phrase that you're interested in searching for you want to to uh, put that in quotation marks. So I'm going to put it on both sides. What that prohibits, um, if, I, if, if I did not put the quotation marks, what I would probably get a lot of alerts about is when someone it mentions the word marketing and twins, it could be as simple as somebody put in on a blog that Sally had a set of twins today and we're, we're, we're real excited and the marketing department at her company is going to send flowers that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the word marketing twin so that I know if our brand is being mentioned out on the internet. Secondly, I can do a comprehensive look. Um, I'm going to I'm going to select that because I like that option. You can select just blogs, uh, but I'm going to do comprehensive. How often you can do this, you can see once a week, once a day, or as it happens. I could do as it happens and really stay on top of things, but it's easier to manage for me if I select once a day and it gives me a chance to um, to try to keep up as best I can with that. Then you have the email address. Now for this tutorial I've already created this but if I was to create alert here by clicking that what's going to happen is I'm going to be sent an email to this email address here that is from the Google Alerts system and it's going to ask me to confirm that alert so it's very critical once you hit create alert you'll be it pops up a screen that says you have to go into your email and confirm that and you want to go into your email, click the confirm link, and at that point that means you've set up your alerts and then later you can go in and manage those as you need to. You may find that you've created an alert for a particular product that later that product uh, is null and void and so you can go in and manage your alerts and delete that so you don't receive information about that. Or maybe one of your competitors folds uh, and goes under so you don't have to worry about the competitor, you can take that uh, competitor out. Um, so what happens once you've done that? Well, you're going to get something that looks like this. And this is an alert that we got. This is a blog alert. You can see here it's listed there. And so at first I thought, okay, well, this is just our blog because we talked, we rolled out this new marketing strength training. But I realize it's not because it says here this functional fitness blog. So let's go look and see what that is. Now, this looks to be like some kind of fitness related, so I'm not sure why it's picking this up in that, but maybe because we did roll out a thing called marketing strength training today and I'm gonna go back to the alert and see if I click on the, the heading there maybe something different 
Yeah, this looks a little different. Okay, well, see, here's what it's pulling up. See this um, marketing strength training launch. Well, this would be a time where maybe we've got some exposure because we put strength training in there. That's somebody who is looking at this functional fitness blog sees our YouTube video here announcing that we've launched this marketing strength training program. So that's just a good idea for me to know that the Google Alerts is working and it's scouring the web once a day and pulling that information in so that way I have that. And that is how you set it up and why you would want to set up Google Alerts. I hope that's helpful.